what is up, database? Data Dollar Seven here. Pet you, you're on. Hi, let's do this. All right, today we're gonna. Do, I'm doing kind of a different video. Video based on. All right, it's a more of a live discussion. I felt it's easy for me to do re, sort of reviews this way because honestly. When I do, like, solo kind of just standalone reviews with all that, I it never turns out the best, in my opinion, but... And, and plus... And plus, this series, unfortunately, is going to replace first viewing because mainly, mainly that's... That one kind of takes... Let me just tell you, it's hard to do, it's hard to, to film, it's really just... But whatever... But whatever, I will admit, the last one we recorded, well, I didn't get it all done. I got all the footage of me and Pitt was on Deadly Ground, second Steven Seagal movie we did. Did, and I can't find that footage, but currently, but if I do find it, I will release it, all the footage of just us together on, on, on my second channel. But either way... Either way, this is what it's going to go. Okay, so we're not doing Steven Seagal today. Today we're doing Diary of a Wimpy Kid, The Long Haul. And this is the point where people said, said, you know, like, this is the worst out of the bunch. So, so the question is where, you know, like, is it, is it bad or is it a good or is it just kind of eh? And eh. let's let's discuss and let's find out. So, all right. So the at least the first two movies is you know like they were kind of doing the books in order, books in order, but then. But then the third movie was Dog Days, which kind of took elements from, from you know, like the third and fourth book. Third book being the last draw, the fourth one being Dog Days, and kind of mixing them together. Okay. And you remember this. So. Oh, I do remember me. So. So either way, yeah, so either either way, for the first three, th so for like the first, so for sheesh. your computer is acting up. Never mind, there's just notifications because I had to kind of pull up the cast list here. So, basically, for, so, but then, you know, like, we get the long haul, which was, I think, the seventh book in the series. No, was it? Or was it the eighth book? I don't remember, because they skipped a few of them to make the film. Film, and let's just go on. For the first three movies, movies, you know, the, the cast at that point was... Was, you know, like, was, like, pretty much, pretty much was all the same up until this fourth, this fourth installment. Oh, man, so we got, so, you know, like, the cast for the first three movies, because it's kind of important. First, there was Zachary Gordon, who played, you know, Greg and... And, and Devin Bostick, Dick, who played Roderick. Rachel Harris played Susan Evely or the mom, and Steve Zahn, who, who actually is an underrated actor in my opinion. Like the last person I saw the movie I remember him was in Daddy Daycare, which I actually like that movie. It's really funny. He played this sort of like trekking nerd. 
her in that film, but you know, like you know, like Steve Zahn's a hilarious actor and so he plays Frank, aka the dad, and we had and then we had Robert Capron who played Rally for all three movies. Then they're like the side characters, like Oh, and I forgot. We got and we had twins. We had twins, you know, like just in one shot taking their place or whatever. Ever like Connor Fielding and Owen Fielding, who both who both play Manny, but they there would be one shot with one and then one shot with the other. Yeah, but it, because kids uh, are unpredictable, so that was actually in handy. Because if one of them decided to misbehave, you could just go with the twin. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Well, the thing is, they did that with the Olsen twins back in Full House back in the time. And, and so, and of course, you know, like, there was, a I know, there were, there were, t there were, yeah, basically, there was Grayson Russell, who played Fragley, and Karen Barrar, who played Shrog Gupta, who would go on, on to the Disney Channel to play Ravi and Jesse. Jesse, and then there was also going on. There was Peyton List as Holly Hills, who would also go on to star in Jesse as Emma. And then, yeah. So either way. All right, so now, so now that we kind of get get to that point, let's just like let's get to let's let's just get to like well now let's get to this this film. The one biggest change when it came to the long haul was was basically was basically the cast change. change. And so, and most of these people I hadn't even heard of. So they were definitely new to acting. And if they weren't new, they probably just started in like indie films or something. Or maybe they're just, who knows, but either way. Alright, so then we, and just so you know, there's a huge elephant in the room. When it comes to the casting, but we'll get to that later. All right, so basically, so basically, replacing Rachel Harris was was Alicia Silver Silverstone, who I haven't seen in any other other film film besides she was. Bad Girl and Batman and Robin, which was a dumb Batman movie. Alright, alright, so then we had... Then we had Jason Ducker, who... Or Drucker, who... Who replaced Zachary Gordon as Greg. Greg and Tom Everett Scott, who I have no idea who that is. Who... who replacing Steve Zahn. And, and, and then there was, there was Owen Azatos, I don't know how you pronounce that, who played Rally, which I'm just going to get that out of the way, get out of the way, he doesn't really have much to do with the film, he's only in the beginning of it, and is only mentioned once throughout later of the film. Uh, yeah, I mean, the long haul really was one with not many others were in it. Yeah, it... It mainly centered around Greg and his family. And then we had... And then, once again, we have twins Wyatt Walters and Dylan Walters, who played Manny. Played Manny, and... 
probably the most controversial of all the casting, Charlie Wright. Now let's talk about that. There was this like hashtag going around, hashtag not my Ra Roderick, because you know, like to be honest, to be honest, and I kind of agree. You know, like Devin Bostick was was pretty much the the Roderick. You know, like no one else could see him. Roderick as any one else being played by him, you know? Okay. Him, and while this particular choice, I will agree, is not as good as De Devin Bostick was, it was, I mean, it's passable in my opinion, though, though this one's a little more dumb, and a little, just a little more dopey, a little more stupid, you know? And and you know, not as good, but I but he does all right. I'll say that. I didn't really have any expectations. Uh, I just watched the movie. Yeah, but I honestly, uh, and now we just need to talk to you know, like the characters about kind of the character and personalities of this film. Like basically, Jason Drucker's Greg Heffley. Like I will admit. It's closer to the books in a sense, and swear, where, where you know, like, while in the first three movies, while Greg was kind of how he was in the books, he also had a side to him where he actually felt sorry for what he does when he does something wrong and, you know, like, tries to make it better, you know? Okay. Better. Because he, he knew he screwed up. Here, Jason Druggers is like, I mean, I, and some people might possibly find Gre Greg's character annoying in this one. Because, and honestly, he's kind of a brat, to be honest. But that's how he was in the books. Yeah, that's just how he was in the books. He was in the books, but I it, I guess it comes down to, like, you can get make up how he sounds in the book, you know, like, to make it not how it was here, you know? Again, it's just kind of like why some people will say, you know, like, a book is better, because you can kind of, especially in a pictureless book, because you can make anything look like how you want it to, you know? Yeah, you can. And, all right, but either way, and then I already covered Roderick's character, like, and all right, so now let's just get into kind of the plot of this, this, and how it goes down. A lot, I mean, well, unlike the book, there's kind of a point to this film. Basically, they're going on a road trip to go to. Their great grandma's, mama's ninetieth, ninetieth birthday, ninetieth birthday, and of course they kind of get into little shenanigans along, along the way, and and of course it's just kind of becoming you know like somewhat of a problem with them in a sense, because oh it's a technology free thing which. Uh, which I'll get to that, get to that part of the movie in a, in a few, in a, in a little bit, but, so, but also, Greg has kind of a side plan that on the way he's gonna drop by this player expo. Oh yeah, I remember that, the whole, what he wanted to go by, the go the trip, that was coming up with this whole plan to do it. Yeah, and he, the whole reason was, all right, so let's just get to the beginning. It kind of starts off in Corny's, which was, which that restaurant was in the third wheel book. Book, but here it's just like what ends up happening is like, like in that book, like Manny gets stuck up there, and 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 instead of Greg giving up, he manages, and I don't know why Manny couldn't just go down the slide to begin with. I don't know. And so he goes down the slide, and, you know, like, he goes into the ball pit, and he's looking. Greg ends up looking for Manny, but then he finds a, a diaper in there, because I don't know. And then he... It's a freaking 
Diaper, yeah. Yeah, and he basically goes like, and then he just starts screaming because he's like, ah, you know, diaper, diaper, diaper. And then everybody sees it and then they start filming it. And everyone starts filming it and he goes viral. And then Roderick Manson, he's like, he's like, you've gone viral, bro. It's already got 6,000 views. And I'm like, 6,000 views is, is nothing. I mean, well, 6,000 people seeing you do that is still kind of embarrassing, I guess. Yeah, without a doubt, and it's embarrassing. So, basically, he tries to... Basically, there's this YouTube star that he likes called... What's his name? Mac Digby. Digby, who I swear they're trying to pay some kind of homage to. To, like, PewDiePie and Jacksepticeye and... Markiplier, and and from what they kind of make him look like, I'm like a mix between Markiplier and Boogie2988. Oh, uh, okay. You know that guy who's just, who was really fat? That gamer who was really fat? Yeah, he was, he was anyway. Really fat, but either way, but either way, who was played by Joshua Hoover, who I don't know who that is either. I don't know who that is either, and and so he so he plans to you know like so he sends him an email saying oh can I be in a video with you and then he just replies to them really quickly it's like an instant response or whatever as those things tend to be and so he says meet me at Player Expo and so now one problem with I that I found out with with that I originally had which I don't think it's that big of a problem now listening to the books and reading listening and reading to the book the books again and also listening to some of the later books on audiobooks for the first time i really can't put it past because greg was pretty stupid in in some instances in the books books you know I mean, yeah, some people definitely say that he was. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think it's so much out of the ordinary of what he would do in the book, but I think it's stupider than usual. Basically, so basically, he tries to find out where Indianapolis is from where they're for where they're be, and then so he gets out of this map, map in a map book or whatever. He's like, and it's only showing us a different view, and he's like, oh, oh, it's only two inches from from where. For where Mimos is, and like, I'm just like, and then Rally actually kind of makes a smart comment here. It's like, he's like, I'm not sure that's how maps work, and it's true that's not how it works. Like, I see this as kind of like an instance. Like, remember that Calvin and the Hobbes story where they're basically planning to go to Yukon, Alaska, and they basically take the globe and they say, "Oh, we're going to be here within." The next afternoon, but it would have taken. But that's not how maps work, and they w it would have taken years just walking there. I know it would have taken just years, years, maybe months. I don't know walking there. It all depended on where Calvin lives, which I'm not. I'm not even sure where he lives. It's never said where he lives in the book. But either way, back on topic. So. So, yeah, like, there's, like, the whole, so then they get on the road, and, and so then they stop at the first night at the ho on the road, and some shenanigans ensue, and, of course, when they tell them it's an unplugged road trip, you know, like, they're kind of just, and, to be honest, Roderick, he, like, Roderick, he's basically like, He's like, this is not cool. Who do you think you are bossing us around? And I just, and I just, I just kind of chuckled at that. Being, I mean, I that always makes me chuckle mainly because, because you know, because, because I'm just like, you're really gonna talk to your mom like that. And all right, you're just gonna tell your mom, baby, like, who are you doing bossing us around? <laughs> If honestly, if I said that to my dad, he'd probably smack me, but either way. Or he would get mad, but either way. <laughs> so, 
So he... So, and then there's this one point where they're just scrambling for things to do, because obviously it's unplugged. And so then Roderick shows... Now, this was in the book, too, but it was portrayed as a past event in the book. Basically, Roderick makes a sign that's, that says, says, help, these people are kidnapping us, and people is spelled wrong. Wrong, and then, of course, somebody in the car sees it, and then they get pulled over by a state trooper. And then it's just kind of like, he's just like, you guys are in so much trouble. It's just so stupid. Stupid. You can't. Just, you, they're just like, help, help. the signs and everything, and people call the cops off. Yeah, and so, and so, yeah, they get chewed out by the cop in probably the most cheesy and over the top way. So they managed to get to the. So, like, the first hotel stop, which, like, in the book, it's crappy, you know? And the whole thing, and it still has the same thing around the book, like, like when they go to the grocery store, when, and Roger gets nothing on, mo on his mom's list. Oh, uh, yeah, he gets absolutely nothing. Uh, nothing on mom's list, and then... And so then he, like, gets... And then he puts that frozen pizza in what he thinks is a microwave, but it's really a mini-safe. Oh, yeah, so he can't even get the pizza out because he doesn't know the code. So yeah. he's just like, oh, jeez. <laughs> so, no, these are so in the... So, yeah, that's kind of fun thing. And, all right, it's... All right, all right. Sorry about that. Kind of a little cut right there, but either way. So then we get to basically now in the book there there was this family that Greg reverenced to as Beardos. Let's talk about these the let's talk about these guys for a little bit for a little minute. Basically, the dad. That the dad he let's just who the now let's just say the dad looks like Shay reminds me of Sh a fat Shay Carl for some reason and he kind of looks like Shay Carl too when he was fat and, and of course there's always him trying to avoid and and literally the guy look, is pretty much acting like he's gonna beat up Greg I'm like what are you gonna what do you, what's that going to accomplish? You beating up a child because, because, just because you supposedly scratched your van with that cart when, when I don't know how he didn't see that happen. And, and so, and so, yeah, what is even the point? Are you really gonna beat up a kid? I swear. I know, right? It's like, are you really gonna beat up a kid? I swear. But, but either way, you know, like, they do okay, and the kids kind of play your stereotypical low-life brats, you know? And it turns, and these, <laughs> they turn out to be flat-out low-lives, because, and just, you know, if I mention spoilers, we'll be in... In a sense, like, there's a point, like, in the book where, you know, like, the boat tarp comes up, and then the stuff they had in it kind of flies out, then they gotta go pick it up, you know? Okay. But in the movie, like, the Beardos, they just come, they just come right behind, then they start stealing some of that stuff and just mocking them, just being, and I'm just like, what low lives, man? And it's like, oh my gosh. So, and let's just, let's just get, and let's just kind of get, so then they go to the country fair, which, uh, hold on a sec. All right. Okay, where were we? Oh, yeah, I think we were at the country fair, I think. So, yeah, it's basically like the film. There was a whole thing with avoiding the, like the book, like the, like the book, it was like, Boarding the Beardos, but again, and of course, we have to mention that 
like the book, this is where they win that pet pig. Which, to be honest, honest, I don't even. Uh, there might be some state fairs that do that, but really. Really, there's like, like, especially with some people who come from this fair out of state. It's like they just expect to, everybody knows how to care for a pig just because they're out in farmland country. Say that again. I didn't have you on speaker there. Yeah, you sounded like you were pretty, um, uh, pretty breaking up. All right. Now say what you said again. So you, from what I can tell, you're mentioning the pig part and stuff. Well, they got one of the pig and stuff. From what that I can hear you, right? Right. Right. So basically, it's just like. I know they're out in the country, but what state fair in their right mind would give a real pet pig out as a prize? That is a good question. What kind of place would give a pet pig as a prize? Especially with some of these people who are out of state. Yeah, I know. Out of state people, especially if they live in a big city, may not be able to take care of it. Exactly. Heck, heck, in some states... Some states and certain cities, you're not. You cannot have a pig as a household pet. Exactly. So, what a giving a pet away as a prize. What a weird sort of concept. Especially with, with the fact that I don't know, and that's a grand prize for guessing how much that pig weighs, which. It's kind of like that dumb thing at Lagoon. If you don't know what Lagoon is, it's an amusement park where we live. Live so... Like... It's basically like there's this ga game where you step on a scale and the... Uh, and basically the, the game operator tries to guess how much you weigh. I think it is if they don't even get any... Cl even close, it depending on it's depending on the prize you get. I don't know how it works. I never did it, but I've seen people do it. But but still, they gotta take into consideration that like people who are from out of state, like I said, some you can only have them on farms outside the city. You cannot have them as a household pet. And so, yeah, that's kind of weird. And he's like, and then Greg tries to tell you that, like, we're not like you people. We're normal people. And he's like, oh, you do say people who, who live and work on farms aren't normal people? That's not what I meant. <laughs> yeah, that kind of gets a laugh out of me. So, and there's also the stuff that w this also was in the book, like deep fried butter on a stick. Now, I know that there are some, like at a county fair or like whatever. I've only been to two state fairs, so one right here in Utah and the other one up in Blackfoot, Idaho. Uh, okay. I've been to uh, uh, here in here in Utah as well as uh, Ohio. Can't remember if I've been to any Colorado. Yeah, so, so yeah, there there is some there is deep fried food, but like, so like deep fried butter on a stick. I wonder what that would even taste like. That would be interesting. I want to. I should. I want to give it a try if I get the chance. Butter on a stick. Deep fry butter on a steak. Huh, I'm starting to wonder if there's any way we can learn how to deep fry because obviously deep fryers are commercially available. Oh, yeah. So if we, if we get, get well, wait, deep frying's pretty easy. I'm pretty sure with a stick of butter, what you have to do is bread it. 
And then, um... Like, put the batter on it? Yeah, just put the batter on it and fry it. Because, of course, you're going to need some form of bread. Yeah, so... But then I forget, you worked at Wendy's. I did work at Wendy's. At Wendy's. So, did you ever... I'm pretty sure you've deep fried a, a couple of things. Probably more than one thing there. Uh, mostly here at Walmart. If, uh, like, if, 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 either way... So, either way, like... So, yeah, and I, I remember there was something, there was something on Disney Channel a long time ago, they were at a fair, and they're, like, making mockery, like, making fun of what kind of, what kind of deep-fried foods would be there, like, there was also deep-fried shakes. Deep-fried shakes, okay. Which looks like, basically, like, a deep-fried, like, looks, which would probably be a milkshake, like, in a, basically a, a cup made out of breading. That's what it looked like. He was like, oh, and at least they have healthy eating choices here. Deep fried salads. Deep fried salad? I don't think that would even work, to be honest. So, either way, then we get to the point where, you know, like, Greg is getting chased by Mr. Beardo, and they go into, you know, like, one of those rides that, like, spins around, and you have to stand up against the wall. Wall okay. interior, and then it spins around. I've never been on one, but but apparently, you know, like you don't move because you know, like spinning. The pressure is so great that it keeps you against the wall. I've been on one before. That's what I'm saying. I've been on one of those before. They spin so fast that you just they spin so fast that even if that if you were to get yourself up a oh what. Against the wall, you would just float on the wall. Yeah, so, so basically, you know, like, so the Beardo, so Mr. Beardo, that's what we're gonna call him. So Mr. Beardo, he gets on there and he's trying to climb over. He's climbing over people, and Roderick's feeling nauseous from eating too much freaking butter. If he's, and he said he had nine sticks of. Of deep fried butter. Nine sticks. That's quite a bit. Ugh. To be honest. Ugh. Right, whatever. To be honest, I would think it would be a little boring tasting. To be honest with you. I it's a little bit boring, actually, because if you think about it, it's really just butter with bread. Yeah, that would, and plus, you know, like, butter, it kind of tastes a little boring on its own, but, I know. Um, but either way, so he's climbing on, then he gets to Roderick, which, now this kind of shocked me when I saw it in theaters, because I don't, I've, I have not seen a PG movie that's like, okay, so they, so basically what he does, he climbs over Roderick, even though he tells him, Tells him not to because he's not feeling good, and then then basically Roderick throws up, uh, comes out in slow motion. Then it goes over, flies over to Mister Beardo's face and splats on him. I mean, I'm not saying he didn't. I'm not saying he didn't deserve it, but 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 sheesh! I don't think I, I don't think I've seen a PG movie. Since the 80s, that's or older time that actually shows puke coming out like that. Maybe I have, but but I, usually they just don't show it. I don't know, I just wasn't used to that. But so, so yeah, that one was a little funny. I mean, I mean, it was disgusting, surely, surely, but <laughs> but I'm not saying he didn't deserve it. Because seriously, this guy is chasing after a kid. What's he going to do? You got to beat him up like I just got finished saying? I know, it's like you're going to beat up a child. They are a great example of a man right there. Yeah, so... So then we get... So then... 
when it comes to the pig. Then there's that whole chaos in the car where, car where, where, you know, like, basically the dad's trying to do a business call, then all this commotion happens. Yeah, so either way, so then we get to the point where, you know, like, where, like, and let me just skip to this part, because this was one of my favorite scenes in the book, The Long Haul Witch, which I'm glad they put into the movie. Remember when those all those seagulls get into the car? Oh yeah, the seagulls. Yeah, they just they're just uh, driving around all of a sudden. The seagulls are like, <laughs> yeah, basically because he was throwing cheese puffs at him. But it's never a good idea to feed seagulls because they'll just keep coming back for more. Like, I remember there was a sign, little sign at the zoo that said, don't feed, feed, feed the seagulls, which I haven't been back to that zoo in years. I don't think I've been there in a zoo for years either. Yeah, but then there's stuff that still hasn't, hasn't changed there, I'm pretty sure, but. Either way, let's let's get to the point here. Let so so then basically, you know, like the the seagulls come in for the cheese puffs, and then and then and then you know, like you know, like it's trying to get the cheese puffs back, but you know, like Greg won't let go. But then he, but then you know, like it wins, and then cheese puffs like. Jumping back into the car, then a bunch of seagulls go in. I was laughing for like two hours when I read that in the book. Book, but I was also glad when they put it in the movie because that was my favorite scene from the book. Uh, so, so like, let's. Now let's kind of get into the problems I personally have with this with this film, and this one is kind of the big one. All throughout, there's constant, just constant, trying to pander to today's kids with technology, cell phones, mentions of Instagram and Snapchat or Snappy Chat, as the mom says. And also with YouTube and stuff like that. Especially when they do that diaper hands thing. Yeah, it's called diaper hands. With Greg with the diaper. And it's like... And he like, he's like become a meme of sorts. And it's just like... It's like even though... Even though it's clear that the... create That the writers of this film have little understanding... On how this type of culture works... Yeah, this one is not going to age well at all. So, yeah, a lot of the tropes in this are not going to age well. And plus... In fact, I kind of see it as kind of a sad commentary on today's society, unfortunately. That's sad kind on today's society. It's like it, it, the, the, the movie was written by a boomer. All I said, this society doesn't know what the past is like. <laughs> and so, yeah, there's constant that throughout the whole movie. And it's like, you don't... It's just like, they don't... It, it's just done without little with little understanding on how stuff like this actually works. Uh, and then there are jokes that don't work. And other things are like some jokes that don't work. And there's just one particular joke when they're 
trying to figure out how to get to the gaming expo. And he's like, do you have any money? He's like, no, we're going to use Uber. It's completely free. Roderick's just like, it just says that. And he's like, they're like, then how do we make a profit? He's like, I don't know. I'm not a businesswoman. I don't know if that joke with the businesswoman thing really holds any water. Was Uber started by one? I don't know. I personally don't know, to be exact. To be to be honest, and I really don't care to look it up. But, but when it comes to that, the Uber thing, it's only used to move the plot along. It's not really... They don't even make a joke out of it. Okay, they do, but they don't make the joke they should, you know? Uh, the, the joke they make when they get there is like, I didn't think it would take one hour. It would take an hour to drive two inches. Yeah, I didn't think it would take one hour to drive two inches. Do you want to know what the joke they should have made there? What's that? Roderick looks at his phone. He's like, Huh, why am I, why is there suddenly a, why is it suddenly charging me? Oh, well. That, no, that, it's like, why is the one charging me money? Oh, well. To be honest, that would have ma made that joke saying, oh, it's completely free, work a lot better. But unfortunately, but unfortunately, it's just there to move the plot along. Then there's just stuff that's just dumb, like, apparently, like, first of all, the the music the parents choose is, like, Spice Girls. Oh, yeah. Like, I'll tell you what I want, what I really want, I'll tell <laughs> To be honest, that song's kind of annoying. Spice Girls. Yeah, I'm just like, my question is, you know, like... And then there's like stuff that it, that is actually pretty funny, like l like when like the, when they're playing that game in the game in the car, the car, you know, like reading the cards, but unlike the book where it was just where you know like it was just one of the questions that 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 like the one that was the worst just happened to be a question in the cards cards that Roderick just happened to have done. Because it was I Must Confess. Oh, uh, yeah, I Must Confess. But then... But, but, but then... I to keeping an elderly woman's house. Yeah, yeah, but... But Greg just kind of starts off reading the card, just try... Just trying to, you know, like, see if he'll confess, you know, the stuff that happened in the past. He, like, that's just how it starts. And so he's basically like... Oh, I once broke a window with a BB gun and brained my little brother. Yeah, I totally did that. <laughs> yeah, and, and and then you know, like you're saying, I and then it and then the mom is like, "Give me that." He's like, "I must confess that I that I once took my mom's car without a license and and scratch it really rebellious. Oh, I totally did that. It's like this game was waiting for me." And and then finally, and finally, it's basically like I once t t TB the the house of a sweet old lady next door to me. He's like, "Oh, I totally did that. Yeah, totally did that. I win. I own you, losers, losers. Do I get my van fixed now? Because apparently, this serves this whole talk about that." Roderick's band van is broken down and they're not going to give him money to fix it. He's like, do I get my van fixed now? And also, let's just put it like here, uh, Roderick is still just as dumb. I mean, Devin Boss thinks Roderick was a little smarter, but not much compared to the books. Here, it's just like, like basically, he like Great kind of suckers, you know, like Roderick into going to, to the Gamer Expo with him, mainly for the Silver There's this drummer contest, like, sort of like rock band of sorts, where the grand prize would be like, I think it was $1,000. But he does, ends up do, doing terrible anyway. Wait, and, he's, and he makes it go, oh, I can buy three vans with that. No, you can't. How the heck 
how the heck Roderick is going to get any woman in life? Like, how? How is he going to get any woman in life? That's, that's a question that it, that it seems like nobody can answer. Because, I mean, seriously, he has, like, no life skills whatsoever, it seems. No, he doesn't. And to think it would take him to the old school book but before he would actually get a freaking job. And probably one last walk. Yeah. Him. Yeah. Then, then another thing that they that they brought from the book is when they're in the woods, like, and they're out of signal with the GPS, and then those cinnamon rolls that that Roderick bought. But they're like up close to the heater because does also like it in the book. Look, and also let me comment on the thing when that happens after the whole Siegel incident. They're just about to give up, you know? He's like, did you know like it's me like did so and so and what about Meemaw's brother when with fighting the British in World War II? And I'm like, okay, stop. I know you're not that stupid. I know. Come on, man. Yeah, I'm like, okay, stop. I know it was probably done to make a stupid joke. But so, like... Yeah. There are some pretty stupid people out there, so is it really that far off actually to believe someone would think like that? Yeah, but but I'm saying if you go to school, I'm pretty sure you would know that. I mean, I mean, I'm, I mean, I mean, anything, so. I mean, they don't teach it that late, late in in school. They don't. So either way, back on this. So basically, the reason there was heat in there because, like the book, like the radiator thing was kind of shot. So they had to keep heat away from the radiator by turning the heat up to full blast, which would be really miserable. Oh, that would be. Which would be pretty miserable, anyway. <laughs> so it ends up being. And after this part, there, are, there is also another, another. It's not so much a joke, but it's a reference. Reference, but that I think really just didn't belong in this film. But either way, so, so like I said, and like in the book, the cinnamon buns explode everywhere, where, and it was also said to be a hunting area, which leads Roger to believe that there's a gunshot, and then everyone believed there's a gunshot, and then basically it splattered everywhere. And they. And, and, and then Danny licks it, and he's just like, ugh, and just passes out. Yeah, because he thinks his brains are oozing out. Let me tell you something. I mean, come on, come on. Let me tell you. No, uh, come on, Roger, really? If your brains were oozing out, you'd be dead. I know, you'd be dead, like, instantly. So. <laughs> <laughs> I still think that was, that was pretty funny. Anyway, so then there's, like, a reference, like, there. Basically, they're all dirty after getting caught in the mud because they got stuck in the mud and they got splashed everywhere. Splashed mud all over. He's basically like... And then, like... And so then Rush like, relax, Mom, you look like the girl from Mad Max. And, he's, and then she mentions, like, one of the actors from the older films, which I haven't seen, but... But, and then Rush like, no, the one, one that got squashed by the water truck from the new one. Okay, that does not belong in a and belong in this type of film. I I know. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> they used to reference. Uh, I mean, I highly doubt a little kid, is, uh, a little kid watching it is gonna get referenced. But right, but that's still pretty much saying a thing. And he's referencing that scene in Fury Road, which I have seen, seen, and yeah, that does happen. I'm glad he didn't mention that that woman who got squashed by the water truck was actually pregnant. Oh, yeah, and then I, you see the scene where they cut the baby out of her, and it's just like, 
<laughs> Ugh. Ugh. To be honest, to be honest, I was really disturbed when I first saw it. I'm like, oh, man. Yeah, it's... Yeah, yeah, I'm glad he didn't mention, you know, like, saying, oh, the pregnant one that fell out of the, out of the, out of, uh, that got squashed by the water truck. No. Basically, I'm glad he didn't say that, say that full part, but still, that does not belong there. And I don't even know, th and also, the, the reference kind of doesn't make sense in a way, because... Because, you know, like, basically the girls that, you know, like, that were the wives of that dictator, they weren't really dirty. They were well cared for. But either way, that's just one reference. I don't think it's so much a joke as it's a reference, but it doesn't really work. So, yeah, it's kind of a dark reference, if you ask me, but then... But, honestly, it kind of has a decent ending, even though it's over the top, where basically the boat trailer becomes disconnected, and then and then Greg jumps in the boat, because basically the car breaks down, and they have to use gravity down the hill to do the trick. And, you know, like, Mimo's backyard is just right there. And so, basically, basically, you know, like, Greg in the boat, it hits something, and then it launches right Surprisingly precise into me, Ma's pool. But really, the ending is actually really good. Good at that. It's actually really good at that point because it showed just like how much are you willing to go through on this journey, you know? No matter what situations you get into. So, it's, but then, kind of, the ending comes along, and, like, let's give, and also, let's kind of get back to the Gamer Expo for a second. So, like, so he gets to see Mac Digby, well, kind of, so, but, of course, like, the email he gets back, he's like, he tells the security guard who stops him, he's like, oh, I have an appointment, he's like, they sent that out to everybody, which, which, I don't know why people still think that that, getting an email automatically makes them entitled. Nah, it does, but... Entitled, but either way. <laughs> so, he basically does his whole thing... Thing to sneak... Sneak up... Uh, sneak up on stage, and... Basically, have Roderick record him, like, right by McDibby... McDibby to act like they're hanging out or something. Which he ends up ruining his world record, because, you know, like... Greg, like, trips over the court after being spotted. But then... I, uh, Greg trips over the court and ruins it, and everyone's like... Aah! And everything. But let's get to the point. This is another good joke that works. So, basically, the parents are wondering where they are. But then, you're like, man, he's playing with the TV, and it's like... Then it goes to the news, which... How is this gaming exposition newsworthy? I don't know. Oh, but... So then they, so then he sees him on the news, and and as you know, like he's on the mo, the mom's on the phone with the police. A actually, he's re reporting two missing kids, but then he's and she's like, actually, I'd like to report a double murder. At, uh, I, I yeah, I report a double murder. I'd like to report a double murder at Player Expo in thirty minutes. <laughs> I think that's really funny. They they said they said that to like the dispatcher because I'm assuming that's who she was talking to. Yeah, uh, yeah, she just did that right to the dispatcher. <laughs> and I think that's really funny because because you could because they would still come out for that. I know, you would still get in trouble for that, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you still get in trouble for that. It's like, it's so, that actually was really funny. Probably one of the better jokes in the whole film. Um, so, 
So yeah, and they find out who who like Greg is because Gregory Halfley, and she just comes out of the crowd. And he's like, I swear that you will that you are grounded for life and you will never play a video game again as long as there's breath in my body. <laughs> She's pissed. I mean, dang, yeah. And I, and I like how she's walking up, then then the security guard Kurt tries to stop her, but then she just gives her that look of, don't even go there. And then the security guard backs down. Security guard's just like, oh, okay. Like, don't even try me. And so, so yeah, they find out who is it. And then Mac Davis, Mac Davis like, wait a minute, it's Doug, it's Doug We have a celebrity here. And we know who he is. Greg Halfley, Die Brands, Greg Halfley. Then everyone cheers him on. It's just like, ah. Uh, again. Uh, yeah, the whole message basically, uh, the whole message of my movie was basically, technology bad, if it, it was a parent. If it, it's like, no, I want to play my game because I'm a rebel. That's basically what the whole movie seemed to be about. Yeah, to some degree, but but the biggest problems in the film are one, the technology, social media, and and just the and this trends over saturation, ration, and just constant trying to reference that constant pandering, even though they don't know, understand how it works, with no understanding how it even works, and and also some of the stupid jokes and the fact. But the movie does feel rushed in a few areas. I mean, there's a possibility it may have been. I mean, there's only so much you can squeeze into, like, I think 90 minutes. Ninety minutes, but either way. But either way, it's really I mean, is is the movie good? Is the movie good? Not really, but is it terrible? No. It's just kind of eh, you know. To really I I this is one I only recommend you, uh, I mean, I recommend it and kind of draw your own conclusions because I honestly don't know what to make of it as a whole. A lot of people have called it bad, which I guess in some points I can't argue. Argue, but... I'm going to go take something else real quick. You can stay on the line, but it's going to be silent for a bit. Yeah, but don't... But don't worry, we're... Actually, we're... I'm just about finished up here. Uh, Alright. So, yeah, watch it and draw your own conclusions, like... Like, like, there's some stuff that works, some stuff that doesn't, but it's an overall okay watch. It's good to watch every once in a while, but it's not something I'm going to watch over and over again. And this one is definitely not going to stand the test of time, so. So either way, way this concludes the discussion. Tune in next time when we plan to talk about Steven Seagal's On Deadly Ground. Uh, that'll be next time. Yep, bye-bye, everyone. Goodbye.